Today's project is a fun little upcycle. I have a couple of these covered doors and some architectural salvage. I think they were part of some candle holders. We are going to marry them together and create some wall decor. To begin with, I always clean with white lightning and rinse with water. So for today's project, we are going to use the new Bonding Boss by Dixie Bell to cover this panel because it is a slick and shiny surface. This will give my paint something to adhere to. I am going to remove the back of that salvage candle holder hook and then adhere it to my piece. Once it's adhered to my piece, I'm going to paint over it with black onyx tear clay paint. This will be my base. The reason I'm using a nice black base for my project is because tear clay paint is reactivated by water and I want to really get in there and push my paint together. Well, hello, hello, Dixie Bell paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live with a new project. I thought we could sit on the floor, get a little cozy, and paint some art together. So welcome. If you're new, joining me for the first time, I would love it if you drop it in the comments below. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're back to hang out with me because you like to sit here and play every Wednesday around 3 p.m., thanks. Thanks for coming back and joining me. So what am I doing today? What am I up to? Well, it's almost Christmas, y'all. It's almost the holiday. So I'm kind of boycotting big projects. <laughs> I've decided that I don't want to paint anything big anymore for the rest of the week. Maybe even the rest of next week. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So in lieu of a big piece of furniture, we have a piece of art. So I hope that you are going to tune in, hang out, and I'm going to show you what I'm up to. So what is this? It's a cupboard. <laughs> So I sometimes buy random things off the internet because I'm wild like that. This is a cupboard door. You can see the, the shiny surface in the back, right? You can see the holes where the, uh, probably the hardware would be for the hinges to hang up. It's actually quite big and quite heavy. So I have two of these and I have added a piece of decor to this. Now, this piece of decor is kind of interesting because this is salvage. This is this is a piece of salvage that's been sitting in my shed. I actually have two of them uh, for a very long time. This at one point was a piece of a candle holder. This would have had a piece coming out. And there was a hole over here and it was just like a really cool shape that I thought at one point, hey, I should buy that. I can do something with it, right? I can definitely hold on to it. And that's why you should save random things in your shed for like three years because eventually one day you'll decide I can make something out of that. So today we're going to take this cupboard door and this broken candle holder that I have adhered to my door and we are going to make it a piece of wall art. I'm going to add texture, drippy color, boho. Once this gets dry, I'm probably going to come in here and add like gold leaf, maybe some stick with me. It's going to be all kinds of fabulous and somebody one day somewhere can hang it on their wall and tell everybody that they have a piece of original art. And that's cool because why shouldn't you have original art rather than random art from you know a big box store it's always better to have something that somebody has made by hand so what are we going to paint with today any guesses any guesses you can see that i've already put a little bit of black on here that's for shading purposes and i wanted it dry we're going to play with terra clay paint today because it is my favorite go-to paint for texture and it is my favorite go-to paint for drippy boho blended looks and I flipping love it. So you can see over here a little bit of white underneath this black, right? Well, what is this white? You want to hear some nails on a chalkboard? How about that? That is the brand new bonding boss. Did you guys hear the rumors that uh, we have a little marriage happening in the world? We have married Slick Stick and Boss to create an all-in-one bonding primer for anything slick or shiny and prevents bleed through which is crazy crazy good uh it will be available coming soon in in january so make sure you contact your local retailer to see if they will have it in stock so that you too can get on board and play with the brand new bonding boss because it is fabulous so this cupboard door is quite shiny you can see that shine right here see that shiny melamine surface right there that means that it required some form of adhesion primer and bonding boss was it i then came in and filled in a small hole that was up here the hole was from when this was a piece of a candle holder um, and i added the black so that it would be nice and dry so that we can get over top of it and start to put that paint on and pull it off and create all sorts of fabulous things so let's get started all right as always, if you hear me doing a lot of talking and not a lot of reading of the comments, you can uh, pop your comment in below and I promise I will answer it as we go along. On the floor, I'm going to open up majority of my 
clay paint colors. We have London blue, we have galaxy, we have desert tan, we have all of the delicious colors that everybody loves, pistachio and malachite, all of these really great, thick, chunky clay paint colors. Now, what is clay paint? If you don't know what clay paint is, clay paint is a uh, very low VOC water-based paint that is created through the Dixie Belle chalk line to um, be clay. It's clay in there. It's thick, it's chunky, it's delicious, and it's all the things that I like about this paint. So let's put it on. My plan is to go lighter into darker. I'm gonna go over top of this black and we're gonna pounce on our paint. I'm gonna be using a plethora of natural bristle brushes. I have chip brushes. I have a spatula. I have a transfer stick on the floor. We're going to just get in here and get messy because I don't want to do anything but have fun right now. And this to me is tons of fun. All right, let's go. So at the top of this piece, I want to start out fairly light. I'm going to aim the camera up so you can see the top of this little board. And we are going to start with our Terra Paint and Desert Tan. I see Jan asking a question. She's saying, can you use Terra Seal on regular chalk paint? You sure can. Terra Seal in matte is just like a matte clear coat, basically. Um, it's gonna help you seal your projects. You can totally interdisperse those products and change them up. There's no rules in painting. There's no rules in painting. But once this is done, I will be using probably Terra Tough to seal in my work um, and make sure that I am going to get the best possible outcome for my art, although this is art. So I don't expect that a lot of people would be touching it. I feel like once it's up here and hanging on the wall, that will be it. So I'm gonna come in here with Desert Tan and you're gonna see me pounce on my paint. The reason I'm pushing my paint onto my project like this is because of texture. I want to build texture on this, this little piece of art. I think once I'm done, it will be a really cool addition to maybe like hang in a hallway since it's so long and being long and skinny like this will be really good for a hallway space. So Desert Tan is a nice kind of a neutral tone in the Terra Clay paint. I do like this color as almost like a, a buffer, a base. You'll see me use this one a lot when it comes to Terra because it has the ability to just kind of disappear. I'm also gonna add a little bit of yellow. This is called Wheat, and I'm going to keep the same brush. I'm not gonna change my brush out, but we're just gonna play today and have fun, okay? There's no rules in painting. There's no rules today. This is the last week before the Christmas holiday. If you wanna eat chocolate all day and just play with paint, totally loud. I give you permission. I'm giving you permission to do all the things and have all the fun. So I'm just gonna drop this paint on and try and cover my edges so that they start to get dry. There are 18 colors of terra clay paint. If you haven't tried terra clay paint before, it comes in two sizes. It comes in this size, which is a 16 ounce can, which is a little bit different than what you're used to. It has a lid that kind of pushes down and pops on. Um, and then you also have these small little four ounce sizes as well. All right, so let's see, what other color am I going to add? I'm gonna keep up with the desert tan and kind of put it in the cracks here, I think. The plan for this is light and then blue, and then mesh the two together and we're gonna like play and blend. I, I really don't think I'm going to be able to finish this today because of the amount of layers I want to put on. I'm thinking I'll eventually get in here and add stencils and I'll eventually get in here maybe even and add some foils to the project. But for now, I'm just putting my paint down onto my project. Let's see, what other color do I want to add? A little bit of moonbeam. Drop that on there. You see how easily these colors push together and blend. It's really not hard to get a really great blended finish with these paints because they just go so well together. This is reactivated with water. You do need to be aware that it, you should seal your terra clay paint because if you pour water on here, obviously it's going to move some. And if you don't want your paint to move, you're gonna definitely want to seal that in. Let's turn the edge a little bit towards me grab a little bit more of that wheat and come up the side. And this is art, you guys. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be messy and this is supposed to be where you experiment. And if you have a covered door like this, it's a great way to learn how to, almost like learn how to do a different look. You can really decide what kind of look you want to achieve by practicing on a covered door. I really recommend getting 
you know, a board to play on or a cupboard door or something that allows you to just kind of get in here and have fun with it. Just have fun with it. Move your paint around and see what happens. Sometimes amazing things happen and you create a look that you're super into and you really, really want to try again on another project. But cupboard doors are great. You can usually find them um, at the ReStore, like a salvage ReStore or a housing, kind of like a Habitat for Humanity type place. Sometimes you can find like a junkyard that might have a couple cupboard doors. But if there's cupboard doors available, you can guarantee that I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy them. Like it's gonna be me. <laughs> it's gonna be me buying all the architectural architectural salvage because I love to practice and play on doors. So this little piece is very thick. This obviously was a candle holder at one point. Really just kind of want to push my paint in here, but I also want to see some of that black as well. Once this terra paint becomes reactivated, you can get it on here and pull it back with a damp cloth. You can spray it with water. We're going to do all of the above, but I need to get that first kind of coat on there to see what we're going to do. I think I want majority of this panel to be blue. So we're going to be moving into the blues in a quick minute. And then of course, meld them in the middle, mesh them together. But terra clay paint is great for getting a very beautiful old world style finish without a ton of effort. Like it's very, very easy to create texture and charm where there really wasn't any before. So if you're watching, you've tried terra clay paint. Do you have a favorite color? What's your favorite terra clay paint color? Is it pistachio, that bright green? Is it London blue, beautiful faded blue? I love just creating a whole vibe with this paint. I usually use natural bristle brushes when it comes to Terra because I find that I like the texture. I like the feeling of really creating a stippled effect. Like when you put this stippled effect texture on, you're able to get it on there and leave it on there. If you create little peaks and valleys with your paint, they're going to stay. They're not going to come off. They stay where you put them. You do have to be aware that sometimes these natural bristle brushes do shed a little bit. You can wait till they get dry and then pick them out. You can pick them out as you're moving along, but don't be surprised if your natural bristle brushes give you a little bit more of a, a problem with stray, stray hairs. It usually happens. So again, I'm just tap, tap, tapping on a mix of these colors. I'm not even changing my brush out. I want to keep this brush kind of like this will be the lights and then the darks will be at the bottom. I love just deciding what will happen as I go along. I don't want to be like locked into a specific look. I have an idea of a vibe that I want. I just don't know what's going to happen until I add all of the colors on this board. So terra clay paint when it dries is going to change color. I'm going to show you with my heat gun. So you can see that it's, it's wet here and it's fairly dark, but when you blast it with your heat gun and it starts to dry, it's going to lighten a little bit in value. It's going to change a little bit. The colors are going to go from kind of like a darker wet to a really light clay texture and a really different vibe. Can you see how that paint is lightening up? I really want to do a whole wall like this. I feel like this kind of clay look would look amazing on a wall. I think it would just look really cool to get in there and kind of pat on those colors or trowel on those colors and create some gorgeous texture. Anybody can do this. Obviously not a crazy skill to get in here and just rub your paint and pat your paint on. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of, I think I want like a more of a gold color. On the floor, I did bring over some Moonshine Metallics and Gold Digger. I'm gonna take a little bit of this with a small brush and I'm going to put it at the top and then we're going to spray it and see what kind of shimmer we can get over top of our textured paint.
This is the great thing about Moonshine Metallics and mixing your media is that they get a little bit it, it changes everything. You're not locked into one line from one thing. Can you see that gold? Can you see that shimmer up in the corners? Let's spray it a little bit with water and start to manipulate it and see what happens. I like it. I like it. Let's add a tiny bit of, let's go back in and add some black. I'm going to keep a separate brush because the black is pretty dark. So Onyx is the blackest of the black when it comes to chalk, or sorry, when it comes to terra clay paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Onyx and I'm just going to put it up here in the corners. And I'm going to do the same thing with my water. I'm going to take my water. I'm going to start to spray it. And then once I kind of get this dripping where I want it to go, I'm going to start to mop it up some with some paper towel. Remember this paint is reactivated by water. You can manipulate it and move it around. But I want to create kind of like a, a dirty, a dirty, how do you explain this? <laughs> a dirty piece of art. Does that make sense? I'm a big fan of like grunging stuff up and making things look old. You can also do this with wax, but I really wanna spray it and get some of this water moving some of that paint. So when you spray this Terra, it definitely comes back to life. It definitely reactivates some. So I want the drips, but I only want the drips, I think more so on the sides. I don't want them as much. See, see how that's happening? See those beautiful drips? See that running little bit of paint? And when you pull off the top coat, remember I put black in the undercoat? You could see that black poke through. Perfection, I'm super happy with that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is push you back out. Can you see this really kind of pretty textured light color? Let's flip our piece over and do the, pretty much the same thing with blue and run the blue into this part of the of the board so when it's all said and done it's so hard to see because this piece is so long when it's all said and done this board is going to blend together and meld together and become one i'm going to get in here and be adding waxes i'll probably touch all the edges and definitely add some dark wax in there but let's flip it around Ooh, it's heavy heavy old thing let's start up here with the darkest okay so we're going to go Let's go London blue, London blue and switch brushes. I'm gonna go with a chip brush this time. And the reason I'm gonna go with a chip brush is because I kinda wanna cover like a little bit more area, just around the edges. Let's get this chip brush out. London blue is a beautiful blue. Galaxy is a beautiful blue. All of these blues are gorgeous together and I'm gonna mix them all up together but I really wanna get that kind of darkness and that blue paint around the edges. And remember, all of these colors are gonna be on pretty much the same brush. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be kind of making up my own colors as I go along, if that makes sense. None of the colors I'm gonna be using today are gonna to be true on their own. So it's gonna be hard for you to see the value on camera. I think I even wanna put some of that up here in this. So when's the last time you kind of like opened up all the paint and just had fun with the, with the color? Just to kind of play and just like experiment. Let's add a little bit of that green, which is the malachite in here as well. I feel like it's been a while since I've done this. So this is good for me. <laughs> this is good for my heart. This is good for my art. This is good for all of the things to like open up all of my brain and start to make some magic happen. I feel like everybody needs to kind of get on board with just opening up all the cans of paint and having some fun. Just play with it all. Just have some fun and see what happens. So this one brush is gonna be like all of my blues and then I'm gonna switch out my brush and move into like more of my greens. So this one is a little bit more navy. The color that I'm putting up now is Galaxy. Let's see a stray brush hair. Let's get that out. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Tis the season, holiday season and cold season. Yay. 
yay children coming home from school and putting all of their lovely germs all over you. I swear, whenever my daughter doesn't feel well, she just like migrates to parts of my neck and sits there and breathes all that lovely little germs all over me. Okay, so let's start to play with our color and pull them together. I think I won't touch them together and marry them together until I get closer, but I think I wanna keep going with these blues and just patting on this texture and patting on this color. I have a spatula on the floor as well, and the spatula is going to enable me to pull the color of paint. By pulling it, I mean I'm gonna be dragging it. So you have a spatula like this. You can take some of this pistachio um, and you can like drag it down like this on the edges once you get there, but I'm not there yet, I'm just showing you. I also have a transfer stick on the floor. I like to do the same thing with that. I'm just gonna mash that green in with my blues. I don't know, I just enjoy this kind of painting. I could be adding stencils as well. You could use your stencils and build texture up with your stencils. That might be nice on a door like this that could be art. That could be really nice as well. And actually I might take my stick with me and my gold shine and just like hit all of the edges with a little bit of that gold leafing. It's gonna look a little, a little medieval, I think. Once I get this on here, majority of this, I'm gonna to start to spray it and you're gonna see how beautiful it moves. So I'm mixing all the blues, the galaxy, the London blue. I've got on the floor pistachio, malachite. I've got a lot of different colors on the floor. This is a little bit of peacock from the chalk mineral line or silk, I can't remember. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of lighter blue, just in some spots, not all of them, just, just some, just in some of the crevices. So what's everybody doing? Anybody have any last minute Christmas shopping they still have to get done? Is there anybody out there that just hasn't even started yet? Are you still getting started on your, your Christmas shopping? That's crazy, my son comes home from out of state and he should be home tomorrow night and I bet you a million dollars he hasn't shopped for anything yet. <laughs> I bet you he's going to be at the mall on Friday evening shopping and getting all the last minute stuff done. It's gonna be chaos. I do not want to go near the mall at all. I didn't even wanna go down that street this week with the traffic and the chaos. But I know that there's those last minute shoppers out there. You guys are brave, brave, brave getting out and braving the crowds. It's not my idea of a good time. <laughs> if you get a chance while you are shopping this holiday season, I would love it if you would support your local retailers. Find your local places that are not big box stores that will actually really benefit from you shopping with them and seeing your dollars go towards your own community. I'm, I'm a big fan of shopping local. That means if you're in an area where you have a place that has vendors or booth spaces or something along those lines, you're able to really support those people. So now this is the brush that I used when I was in there doing my lighter side, right? Because at the bottom part, I did that lighter side. I'm gonna to start to mix my colors around and start to add in a little bit of that desert tan. I don't want all the blue to sit all blue. I wanna add in a little bit of lightness so this is just a little bit of whatever was left in the brush and a little bit of that desert tan just to lighten up this interior a little bit. It's all about like lights and shadows. This paint is so easy to work with. You will be totally surprised. If you were to try it, I guarantee it'll be your new favorite. Again, same brush those light colors on there mixed in with the darks. It's gonna be harder to get it in and around this, but that's why I went with the black first, the black onyx, so that if there is shadows that show around the edges, it's gonna be black. 
Okay, now I'm gonna hit with this with my dryer and you're really gonna see the color change, but I really need to get this area dry before I move on to the next kind of layer of this piece. You're gonna really see the color lighten and change. You can see it happen a lot faster with these darker blues. I think I'm gonna add copper to this as well. I really like copper and blue together. But let's get this middle layer dry so we can keep building on top of the paint that we already put down. you see how different this looks when it's dry versus when it's wet? It looks so much different. All right, I'm gonna go back in. Where's my blue brush? This is the chip brush. I'm gonna go back into that London blue. I'm gonna to start to add that second layer. And I'm gonna kind of go heavy at the top. And I'm gonna to start to pull as well. Because remember we built these little steeples of texture when you come in and you start to pull a darker color over top of some of these lighter colors, you're gonna get that dimension start to happen, almost like a dry brush. Sorry, I have to come in from the side. I wanna make sure I covered all the edges of that. What are we thinking? Are we loving this? I'm a big fan of blue. I am a big fan of blue in, in pretty much anything I do. I feel like blue is a, a really pretty neutral. Let's bring you in closer and start to work on the spot where this touches together. So you can see this area where you have like the lighter bit that we started at the beginning, the prairie dawn, the yellow. Remember we used this beautiful wheat. Um, I came in with some black and dripped it down. Let's start to marry these two together. I'm gonna need another new brush because I touched my tan brush with my blue brush. So let's start to bring some of this color down in here and see what happens. Once I get it to the point where they're almost touching, I'm going to show you how we're going to marry the two. And if it helps you to wet your brush and get it really into those crevices, you know, you can really kind of push that product into the details when you wet your brush a lot. I do that a lot with Would You Bend. All right, so that's pretty. Let's stick with a little bit more of that dark in the crevices. Remember, none of these colors are gonna be true anymore because I have totally mixed my brush up to the point where there is no more true color on here. All the colors are kind of mixed together. That London blue, that galaxy. I'm gonna come in with malachite and pistachio. It's gonna all come together really nicely. I really like how this piece is sitting on here. I think it's gonna be a stunning piece of art. And then after I'm done, I can decide which way I wanna hang it. You know, I'm not locked into like, this is the top, this is the bottom. I'm totally able to really kind of decide as I go along. A little bit more up here. Brush is shedding some, that's okay. And honestly, if I finish this whole entire thing and decide I wanna add like five more layers, I can. This is art, there's no rules in painting. I'm allowed to do whatever I like. All right, so let's start to marry these colors together. I'm gonna to go with a new brush because I'm gonna go back into that desert tan. And I mixed it in with that beautiful wheat as well. We're gonna to start to really kind of play with these colors. Really wanna kind of get that base started. I'm gonna keep a brush on the floor with a rag. Where's my rag? Under my body, of course it is. I start to push off some of this color And once I get these two colors kind of touched, I'm gonna to start to really mash them in. 
and we're going to start to drip it down too. Should the blue come into the beige, look, I've got a big hunk of blue paint down here, Let's just wipe that off, or should the beige go into the blue? Do you know what I'm saying? Like which way should the marrying of the two go? I feel like the, bl the blue should come into the, the blue should come down here, right? Into the tan. It shouldn't go the other way. I think that that's the way it would be better. Let me get another a new paper towel. Yeah, I think the blue wants to come down, right? Like in my head, that's what I'm thinking is the better, the better option. So we're gonna start to spray and tap. You could spray your piece and drag this blue down and have it drip. See how easily these colors come together? This is not hard. This is like the easiest way to blend paint. Terra clay paint just marries so well with each other. I'm gonna go back to my tan brush. And soften some of these edges up a little bit. There's also going to be a separate brush in between. This brush has nothing on it. So this will be kind of like the blending brush. Wiping it off. I want to keep this brush a little bit dry. Spray it and wipe it off because I don't want too much color on there. And I do see some stray brush hairs on here, but I want to, I don't want to pick at this. I'm going to leave them. Once they are dry, I can totally pick them out. But for now, they're not bothering me. We'll let them stay. Okay, so let's start to spray. I'm going to aim you down. Can you see? Let's see. Finally a live video, Barbara says. You love this look. Barbara, this is a great way for you to practice and get like an idea of how things look. The light looks a little bright. There we go, back to normal. It's a great way to practice is on a covered door like this. Really kind of see what happens when you start to mesh, mesh everything together, melt everything together. You can see how beautiful this blue is drying up here. Let's spray. Okay, I'm gonna take another brush. Do I have any more that are clean down here? Are they all dirty? I'm gonna go back to this brush. This is going to be my like control brush. I'm going to grab a clean paper towel as well. Let's shore up the edges before I spray it. Make sure it stays dry. Because I don't want the edges to run together. I just want to take some of this blue and drip it down. Gad, I really like this. I really like the way this is looking. It's really coming together. All right, so let's take some water and I'm gonna spray around the edges of my, what do you call this, embellishment. Let's start to make some of this blue travel a little bit. Remember it reactivates with water? Let's travel some of this blue. I'm gonna take my fresh paper towel, that one's not dirty, and mop some of it up. Can you see how this is happening? I'm pulling some of that blue down, making those drips, reactivating the water, maybe showing some of the black that's underneath. See that black? Delicious. I love that. I really like how this is looking. I really like that. I actually want to come in here and add a little bit of black. I don't want too much blue. Let's add a little bit of black around some of these edges and spray some of the black. See if we can get some of that black to travel over there as well. I'm 
you don't have to keep all of these lines. Like you can, you can control the amount that you're spreading. It doesn't have to be, too, I don't want it to be too perfect. Like too many perfect runs makes things look weird. <laughs> I like it to be more unbalanced, more imperfect, if that makes sense. Being a little bit more imperfect allows me to kind of like it a bit more. The darker it gets around the edges, the more I like it. I'm gonna spray some of this dark inside these crevices so some of this blue runs down these corners. Can you see that black peeking through? That's what I wanted. That's why I had black as a base coat because I want this terra to move, but I don't want to see the cupboard underneath, if that makes sense. I want it to be the color I put underneath, which is black. So the way that this is laying right now, this is all dripping down. Most likely I will flip this over so that this top part up here becomes almost like the, how do I explain it? This will be the top of my art. So it's almost like reverse runs, if that makes sense. It's not gonna be blue going down. It's gonna be like the blue is gonna be on the bottom. <laughs> Does that make sense? Blue is gonna be shifting down on the bottom. I'm just adding some more paint down here so that when I spray it and it moves, maybe some of the lightness will run down the middle. I do like it when things are have it a little bit of a more lighter dynamic in the middle. Back up to that brush that just has a little bit of blue on it. And also padding. Big fan of putting on and taking off, putting on and taking off. That's kind of like the magic of terra clay paint, building those layers and really making it unique. Okay, looking at this, the only thing I don't like is this corner. This is gorgeous. This I'm loving. This is like, this is my fave over here. I'm really liking the way this looks. Maybe I need to just add a little bit of blue over here. Maybe it's too light. Better. Now, I need to really get this dry before I flip it because if I flip it now, the lights are gonna run into the darks and I don't want that to happen. So let me hit it with my heat gun and get some of these runs dry before I turn it around. We have a lot of water in here. I really want to make sure it's going to stay where I put it. I don't want it to drip the opposite way unless I make it go that way. Okay, I'm going to back you up. And we're going to flip without making a mess, Melissa. Let's do this without making a mess. Okay, so now we're back to the original way that we started with the light on the top. See the light on the top? Why is my light getting so bright? There we go, that's fixed. See this beautiful light at the top coming down into the blues and darker at the base? Can you see the variegated patterns of the color mixing together? Remember I add a little bit of the light over here? Can you imagine if this was like a whole buffet door, how amazing this would be to die for. Absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's keep going. All right, so what do I have here? I have a little bit of paint. Oh, I hear my puppy dog coming in. Let me move my heat gun. I got to put it underneath this thing. I don't want her getting any hot heat gun on her. Hi, Luna. How you doing, sweet girl? You good? You coming in to say hello? Say hi to the crowd? <laughs> There's my Luna Petunia. Huh? You be a good girl? Sweet girl. You coming in to say hi to your mama. I know. Almost time to get our kid, right? She's telling me, she's like, Mom, it's almost four o'clock and that means it's time to go for the bus. My dogs know how to tell time, I swear, I swear it. They always know when uh, it's time to get the heck out of here. Okay, I'm gonna go back into this main brush and I'm gonna start to take some of this gold off the, the lid. I've got some gold digger here. Let's start to powder in some metallics over here on the top of this piece. I just want to stipple. 
stipple in some gold around the edges and see what happens. Gold and blue, copper and blue, both big favorites of mine. See a couple of those stray little brush hairs in there. Really, again, just totally playing with art, playing with our paint. And I'm just taking it from the lid, which is a little bit chunkier, which means it's not gonna be as runny. It's a little chunkier, so I'm gonna build some of that gold. What do we think? Are you seeing that shine up there? Are you seeing how that gold looks? Stunning. All right, I'm gonna dip a little bit into the actual gold paint, which is gonna be a little bit stronger. And I think what I might do is spray some of this gold and bring the gold down into the blue. Oh, I'm really loving this corner right here. Do you ever paint something and find like you, you have a section that you just fall in love with. It's so pretty. Nothing wrong with a little bit of canvas art on old cupboard doors, just for fun. In practice, I might like this look so much that I end up doing it on a piece of furniture. You never know. You never know. So I see a couple little tiny bits where I need to get in and get rid of some of the white that I see hanging out that was just left over from tiny little bits of corners that I might have missed when I was painting. Once I get those little white bits out, I can move along. Let's add some gold and drip some gold down here. Okay, so this is the same chip brush. I'm gonna go Oh, I'm so in love with this spot right here. Like this is just looking so delicious to me. I'm gonna take this gold digger, I'm gonna kind of blot it off. Let's start to accent some of these edges and then spray them and see what happens if we can get some of this gold to travel. Let's get some of this gold to travel down into the blue. Let's create some drippy gold runs. Just some shimmer, a little bit of shimmer. When it dries, it's not gonna be as noticeable. Let's get some shimmer happening down below. Nice, nice, see those little drips coming down? Spraying that paint, making those runs happen. When that gold does actually shore up some and dry a little bit, what'll happen is it'll just be like a glimmer of shine. It's not gonna be super strong drips. It's gonna be like somebody sprinkled this in gold dust. A little bit more. This is the kind of project that I get a little bit lost on. Like I could probably sit here for like a couple hours and just play. Just play with all the colors, play with all the paint, once I get that paint dry, get into my waxes, start to add waxes on the piece. Going back and forth, adding layers, taking off layers. I feel like I need more blue over here. Do I have any brush that doesn't have lighter color on it? I wanna keep that blue. Just a little bit, just a little bit more blue over here. That's better. There was like one spot that just needed a little bit darker. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold this up and you're gonna see the method behind my madness. Let's tip it a little bit so some of this gold runs out of the crevices. There we go, there we go. See that? Beautiful gold. Okay. So in love with this spot right here. I'm, I'm geeking out a little bit on how pretty this part looks. I'm gonna bring you in real close and we're gonna start at the top. So we have all of these terra clay paint colors textured on here, pushed on here, really, really creating gorgeous texture. I have the black onyx underneath 
the black onyx can be scraped back, pulled back, moved underneath here so that when you start to see that black peek through, that's what you're seeing. I've got all the lighter colors here at the top and now we're gonna come down and we're gonna start to show you the blue. So see how it runs down into the blue Terra with that gold accent? What do we think? What do we think of that? Can you see that shimmer, that little bit of shimmer? This is when the magic starts to happen. This is when I like have to stop, hold myself back because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to wait for this to get really dry. Once it starts to get really dry, I can get my hands on it, but it's totally turning out the way that I thought it would. Oh my gosh, you guys, I absolutely love it. Okay, so what's next? I think I wanna wet a little bit and start to pull back and start to see what's underneath these layers. So this little candle holder, oh, I had mud here. This little candle holder um, actually was like a green color underneath. So I'm wondering, even though I put, cause I didn't put the boss on top of the candle piece. I put the boss on the cupboard door. So the new um, product that's boss and slick stick mixed together um, to prevent bleed through also to help you with any slick or shiny surfaces. Because remember this is actually a very slick cupboard door. I put that on the base of this project, not on this piece, which is a salvage piece from a broken candle holder. The candle holder itself was more green. I wonder if I pull it back, if you'll be able to see some of that green that was underneath. Because remember, this Terra is activated by water. So I can start to like pull it off some and really start to see what's underneath. Crazy. What are we thinking? Do you love this? Because I, I really, really, really like this. I really like this. I actually think that maybe this was a really good idea to get an idea of what I'm going to do next for my next project. I, I think that this could be really, really pretty on a dresser. This would be great on a giant buffet. If I could get a buffet that has nice big ornate doors like this, that would be so gorgeous. Let's bring a little bit of this kind of like tan color down some. If I can get some of that tan to kind of come off this brush along with the gold and make some streaks happen. I don't want to put too much on there, just like the little baby, baby touch. You hear my dog crying too. She might have to go out. What do we think? Ooh, oh my gosh, you guys, I really, really like this. This is turning out actually better than I thought it would. What do you think? Ooh, on a mirror, good idea. I have one in the shed. I have a very large 1970s ornate mirror that's like this. You're right, this would look smoking hot on a mirror. This would look so good on a mirror. But for now, I need to like I need to stop and let everything get dry because we know that terra clay paint is reactivated by water and you saw me spray the heck out of this, right? Like there's a lot of water sitting on here. All of these drips, all of these things have to dry. This huge section is wet. I mean, I could sit here with a heat gun and dry it move some of that water out of the corners but I need to get it dry before I come into the next section which would be waxes I think what's gonna happen next is I'll seal it after waiting 24 hours for my project to fully dry and cure I came in with my Terra seal in matte sealed my project and then added some gilding wax to add some depth and color as well I added tiny touches of pistachio that you can see there on the edges of the door and then I grabbed an old stamp and applied that gold moonshine metallics to stamp on some faded words. I obviously touched all the edges with my gold gilding wax and a little bit of chameleon wax in lilac was added as well. A touch of cactus and we were all done. What do you think of this beautiful project? From salvage material and an old cupboard door to beautiful wall art. I absolutely love this and it's a great way to prepare for your next project.